I'm going to recommend some picture books for adults. Hello, welcome to Red Book Show. My name's Jack, and today I'm recommending picture books for adults because in April I am running Picture This with the marvellous Shelley Swearingen. This is the third year we've run this amazing readathon where we promote the idea that picture books are for everybody. Yes, that's right not just for children. If you don't believe me, you can check out some of the amazing videos that we did in the past. I'll link the playlist in the description box below. I'll also link our announcement video so you can see the full details. But basically, we want to promote the idea that picture books are a valid, beautiful, medium for adults to enjoy as well. And there is also an amazing essay by the author Sean Tan. If you're a fan of Sean Tan, he wrote a book called The Arrival, amongst many other things, another one called The Lost Thing. And he's an amazing um, author illustrator. So Sean Tan wrote an essay, or he actually didn't write the essay. He did it gave a talk and it's been sort of turned into an essay online which is about why why picture who are they for picture books who are they for and he explores this idea that when he makes art for a gallery no one asks him who that's for if that's for a child or for an adult but when he makes a picture book people automatically assume it's for children so that's a really interesting essay and one I'd urge you to read I've also done a small video wrapping up at the end of our first year of picture this reading extracts from that talk so um, over the top of uh, Sean Tan's book The Lost Thing so I'll link that in the description box as well but today I'm not going to go too much into the readathon apart from to say there are six prompts which is relevant because I'm about to recommend books based on those prompts and I'm going to show you these beautiful picture books top down so you can see them in all their glory and the six prompts that we've got they're one word prompts and we like people to just interpret them however they want Shelley's prompts are joy night and peach and my prompts are blue nature and change. So I've got um, my books recommended for prompts, for all those prompts. There's also an additional challenge which is an illustrated deep dive but you can find out more about that by watching the announcement video. I won't go into it again here. And I'm also going to recommend some books for two amazing readathons taking place in April. One is People April which is dedicated to memoir, biography, autobiography, basically people. So um, any books that are about events that happen to people, their lives, etc, etc. So you can um, go and check out the host's announcement videos. That's Roz at Scally Damning about the books and Elizabeth from Blue Cans and Books. There is also another really important readathon called Trans Girl April, which is hosted by Kevy over at Say Kevy. And she is hosting this for her second year and she will be promoting uh, trans and non-binary work. So work by non-binary and trans authors and containing um, trans and non-binary characters and subject matter. So really important. I'm going to recommend books for both of those readathons that tie in nicely with Picture This. So without further ado, I'm going to cut away and you can check out my recommendations. Enjoy. Today I'm going to talk you through some recommendations and my pile of possibilities for Picture This. I thought about doing separate videos but actually it's tricky because I want you to see some of the things I want to read. I want you to have some recommendations and I kind of just want to talk about the picture books that are exciting to me that match the prompts. So I'm not going to talk about individual prompts because I think for the majority of the books they have multiple prompts that they cover. So I think I'll just talk you through the books. I'm not going to show you a huge amount of the book because I don't want this to be an overly long video and I've got a huge pile of books next to me. But I kind of want to give you a flavour of the sort of books that I would recommend and books that I'm excited to get to that I've either picked up from the library or recently purchased. So I'm going to start with this beautiful book here. This is The Rhythm of the Rain and you can see it's kind of got some sparkly rain coming down. And this is by Graham Baker Smith and this is a book that I'm recommending that I already own and it is just a stunning book all about the water cycle. But it's one of the most beautiful sort of non-fiction style books I've seen in a long time and I just fell in love with it when I saw it. The illustrations are stunning and we talk this uh, boy plops some water into a pool and the water then takes its journey through a river and then out to sea and down a waterfall and eventually it just it just ends up going all the way around the world <laughs> and we see it yeah water in all of its aspects around the world um, enjoyed by humans and animals alike and then what happens when the water is becomes rain. So this book covers pretty much most of the prompts actually because I think it definitely covers 
blue and nature and change and it also covers joy and night because there's so many joyful images in here and a lot of images of night not quite sure if it covers peach though there may be some scatterings of peach in the color because it's such a colorful book so that's the rhythm of the rain by graham baker smith another beautiful book for the prompt of nature and this one was shortlisted for the waterstones children's book awards last year and it's just beautiful what do you see when you look at a tree and it's just an exploration of different trees and it's just stunning uh, and this was written uh, because the author illustrator who is Emma Carlyle I should have said that um, often sits and paints trees and stares at trees um, in the park and just invites us to reflect on trees near us and what we think of them and the creatures that make these trees their home and it's just a beautiful book and again I think this covers pretty much all of the prompts they're probably not night but I think it covers um, nature, uh, blue change because of the seasons, and then definitely joy. And there is an awful lot of peach colouring in this book. So that's a really good one for covering most of the prompts. This is another book that I've recently purchased and yet to read, but this is one of my books for Picture This that I'm reading, and is Octavie Walters' The Starling Song. And I've seen and heard so many things about this beautiful book. Um, and so this obviously covers the themes of nature. And, and when I get to read Reading it, I can tell you if it covers other themes from picture this as well but um, we're talking about a starling that is wants to sing about the world but first he visits all the other birds who have something to add to his song so if you have a look at these beautiful line cut illustrations it's just gorgeous isn't it beautiful I can't wait to read this one so once I've read it I'll do a review and tell you more about it this amazing book was sent to me a couple of years ago for after picture this by one of the first people who took part in it is my lovely friend Lynn over on Instagram and she took part in picture this the first year and sent me this afterwards very kindly because it's a really unusual book but gorgeous and it's just two cultures two stories it's a wordless picture book and it opens up um, I hopefully I can show you how far it opens up but there are two families and two boys in this book one family lives in Australia one lives in Morocco North Africa the lives of two boys and their families look very different from each other and they are different but some things connect them and just as some things are the same for all families no matter where they live so I think this is a beautiful book so we have the Arabic on one side we have English on the other and as you open the book up the book mirrors itself so this fits definitely the prompt of blue um, and we th I would say it fits the prompt of night and joy because there's the joy these families have in each other so as you open the book up they're designed to be read side by side these stories I'm trying not to knock my camera at the moment to make it wobble but if you can see it's the a, a day in the life and it's done with this amazing art style which at the very back of the book i'll show you in a second um i'll show you the author has put some pictures of her process writing the book uh, creating the book and each so each flap you open it's part of the the child's day in the place where they live and it's just fantastic and so you can see the differences the clear differences but if you look at for instance this part here that's the moroccan family eating breakfast together and preparing preparing their meal and then if you look on this side you can see the australian family eating breakfast and preparing their meal and as you go through the story you start to see the similarities and the differences between the two families and the two cultures and the author has um, talked about their process their collages so they started as drawings and then they were constructed as collages uh, wooden baseboard using natural and artificial materials sand earth clay paints vegetation pa paper fabric wool tin and plastic so stunning uh, this is a really really beautiful book this definitely fits the prompt of blue and night and joy um, and yeah I've, I, I'm sure it would fit some of the other prompts as well as you look through definitely some images of nature in there as well but yeah what a stunning book this next pile of books are as well as being really good books for picture this they also are great books for the other amazing readathon happening in April which is people April so these are all books that are 
biographical, autobiographical or semi-autobiographical. So the first one is one that I've recommended year on year and it's The Dam and it's by David Armand, illustrated by Levi Pinfold, who's an amazing illustrator. If you've looked, um, read the books The Lost Bear and Finding Bear, Levi Pinfold illustrates those. An amazing illustrator. And this is a story told to David Armand by a folk musician. This is a true story told to me by Mike and Catherine Tickle. Tickle. And basically this is the story of the Kielder Dam being built and the Kielder Valley was full of old villages and they basically moved the people out of the valley and then they flooded the valley and created this um, reservoir and the, they used a huge dam. Before they flooded the valley, uh, Catherine and Mike, she was a little girl at the time, got up and they went and took their um, instruments and they played music into the empty homes to leave them because there was music and song and laughter there. So it's beautifully illustrated and it's just really poetic. I don't know anyone who would read it that wouldn't feel touched by this book. Another book I haven't read in a long time but I got at the library because I haven't I haven't seen it in a long time and it is Michael Rosen's sad book and he wrote this after the death of his son so it's not going to fit the prompt of joy I'm afraid but it does fit uh, the prompt of blue and change of course because with grief um, immense grief and with the death of someone you love comes a huge change in your life but he wrote this book um, it's a really important book about grief and it's a really raw examination and it's illustrated by Quentin Blake who is an amazing illustrator the next books are books that I've purchased specifically for picture this that have been on my wish list for some time they also will go well with people April. The first book is The Visible Sounds and it is by Yin Jan Ling and Yu Rong, translated by Philip Salucky. And it is the true story of a Chinese dancer, uh, Li Wa Tai, who became deaf at the age of two following an illness. And it's all about her life and her experience living, um, becoming deaf and losing her hearing and then her life as a dancer who can't hear the music and I haven't read it yet but I'm, I can't wait to read it it looks absolutely beautiful but it also looks like it falls a lot of the prompts so we've got the prompt of change of course because she's had to have a huge change in her life we've got the prompt of joy because I believe she finds joy in music and in dance and then we've got a lot of blue in the book so I'm looking forward to seeing what else we have in the book that might fit the prompt I will do a review of all of my new books once I've read them a proper review so this one looks fantastic this is is just gorgeous. <laughs> it's by David Eggers, illustrated by Julia Sada, Moving the Milner's Mini Moore Mine Mansion, a true story. So this fits with People April. I'm not quite sure exactly the prompt it's going to fit for picture this, but I suspect change uh, is a good one because it's about moving a home. And I just loved the illustrations in this book and the idea of the story because it's a true story about moving the whole house um, in the 19th century, which must have been a big feat. And I just was drawn completely. Oh, we've got Peach as well in here. I was really drawn to the illustrations. I was drawn to the story. But yeah, look at the illustrations. They're just gorgeous. So I'm just going to get a lot of joy reading this, to be honest with you. <laughs> and here is another book that I saw on the recent booktube meetup. And this is Dim Sum Palace by X Fang. And this is... Compa being compared to Maurice Sendak's In the Night Kitchen, if anyone knows of that book, it's a very famous book. Um, but this little girl here, she's going to sleep. Uh, Liddy is her name. And she's been told she's going to the Dim Sum Palace with her family. I mean, just look at this beautiful book. Look, it's like an advert for the Dim Sum Palace on here. And so she falls asleep imagining this palace, an actual palace. So the restaurant's called the Dim Sum Palace. She falls asleep and uh, she starts to have this dream. Well, she doesn't think she's dreaming, but of course she is dreaming. And it, just look at these pictures. So she goes to the kitchen and has an adventure. Um, and it's just looks gorgeous and lots and lots of peach lots and lots of joy in here and it's happening at night so it fits quite a lot of our prompts for picture this and it definitely um, fits people April because it's kind of a little uh, celebration of the culture and food and childhood memories of the author an author that brings me a lot of joy definitely is John Classen and I have a full review of this book The Skull this is one of my absolute favorite top books of last year of any any genre any type and the reason I'm putting John Classen in here sort of as a clump is because of the prompt peach because when Shelley came up with the prompt peach I thought about the fruit 
the peach and each peach pear plum by the Olbergs, which is a classic um, children's book over here in the UK. But then I thought about the fact that I absolutely adore John Classen's use of colour within his books to illustrate sort of light particularly in the skull in my review of it I talked about the fact that we have this peachy kind of dawn light that he uses so effectively and if you look inside his end papers are peach um, so it made me think of the skull and then it made me just think of his illustration style in general so we found a hat it was a book I've wanted for a while and I recently purchased and you can just see peach everywhere so um yeah the John Classen's illustration style very minimalist very limited color palette but a lot of these kind of peachy colors one of my absolute favorite books of all time Sam and Dave dig a hole there's lots and lots of peach in here but of course tons and tons of absolute joy his books are, if you've never read a John Classen book before, they're so funny and just irreverent and silly and yet at the same time you can kind of grasp quite a bit of deeper meaning into them if you want to. I think they're just very open to interpretation but they're just, I love this author so much. So yeah, um, when I thought of Peach I thought of John Classen but of course equally you could cover Night, Joy, Change, um, not so much Blue, not a lot of Blue in his books but yeah I think... Oh, got some blue on here Laszlo is afraid of the dark this isn't his uh, John Classen's book he's just illustrated this is a lemony snicket book the dark um, and Laszlo being afraid of the dark so again we've got all that peach that use of light so I love this book very very much more peach and just joy is Julian is a mermaid and this also would go really really well for another amazing readathon that's happening in April and that is run by the gorgeous Kevy at Say Kevy and that is Trans Girl April and this is Julian is a mermaid. Julian is a mermaid there's a two books about Julian I love Julian as a character but there's peach, joy, uh, change uh, all sorts of things in this book blue uh, so Julian is a little boy who dreams of being a mermaid and yeah, it's just beautifully illustrated, stunning picture book uh, about change and about a boy who it's his grandmother kind of catches him dressing up as a mermaid and putting on her makeup and putting on her clothes. And she looks like she's going to be really stern with him. But what she does in the end is takes him off to the carnival and gets to celebrate who he actually is. And here's one that I haven't read in a while. It's The Arrival by Sean Tan. And I saw that in the library and I couldn't resist getting it out. And it is, um, look at it, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, so this, I think, will cover the themes of change, really. So um, um, if it covers any other themes, I'll talk about it in my wrap up or in my uh, review, if I do a single book review for The Arrival, because it is such an amazing book. This book I was sent for uh, to review by the um, publisher, Greystone Kids. Who do some amazing books i mean look how beautiful this is so this is the voyage i have read it i haven't put my review out about it yet so i'm not going to talk about it too much but this is a child goes on a voyage and really it's an allegory for life and um, being brave and striking out on your own away from your parents so this definitely covers change but just look at it isn't it beautiful um, this would cover blue and nature and joy and um, there's definitely a night section <laughs> so and lots of peach so you can see the peach in it so this covers all of the prompts and it's just stunning isn't it I'm definitely going to do a review of this because I was sent it for my objective review and I will put that out soon and here are some books that I've not read before that I got out of the library and I'm not sure which prompts they fit but I'm just going to share them with you anyway. Um, this is a book I've wanted for some time. It's Small in the City by Sydney Smith and Sydney Smith is an author that I have been considering doing a deep dive into their work um, but this just looks amazing and it's about a child who but they go looking for something in the city and they talk about the fact they know what it's like to be small in the city and give advice to this thing that they're looking for but um, yeah it's beautifully illustrated and it was a book award winner yeah winner of the Kate Greenaway medal couldn't resist getting this at the library this is Chris Van Olsberg who I also absolutely adore and The Widow's Broom so this is the 25th anniversary edition of The Widow's Broom but I think this covers night because it's one cold autumn night a witch's broom loses its power and lands in Widow Minashaw's vegetable garden so she takes it in hugely famous of course very well known but yeah I just think it's beautiful so I'm looking forward to reading that. And two last books which feature a lot of blue. One which looks like an important but um, possibly a sad book and it's called Flooded by Mariajo Illustrajo and it's basically about climate change and the effects of it on 
um, creatures that are not just human. So rising sea levels and what happens. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Then we have this, which I just saw, I'd never heard of before and I picked up because it was in the library. Um, the Depth of the Lake and the Height of the Sky by Kim Ji Hoo. Ji Hyun. Apologies if I'm murdering any of these names, but um, yeah, this is a story about a child from the city discovers winding forest paths, crystal clear lake, the endless starry sky, and this wordless celebration of wonder of nature. And I'm thinking you're doing a video on wordless picture books and the benefits of reading them. But look at it, isn't it beautiful? Can't wait to dive deeply into this. So those are just a few of my choices for picture this and recommendations for you. I could have done an absolute ton. So what I'm thinking of doing is 30 picture book recommendations in 30 days, which I did recently for middle grade March, did 30 middle grade recommendations in 30 days. If you'd like to check that out, I'll leave the playlist in the description box below. But yes, what are you reading for picture this? Have any of these inspired you? Have you been picking up books already? Um, I'd urge you to go over and check out Shelley's recommendations video which should have dropped at the same time as mine and I wish you all a really happy month of exploring and reading picture books because they just bring me so much joy they're beautiful so explore that artistry explore that joy in picture books and tag us if you do any videos on it if you have a youtube channel yourself um, use the hashtag picture this 2024 and tag myself and shelly and we'll come along and watch and add you to our playlist so thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see you again here soon bye